everybody and welcome back to Amity Blue. My name is Nazzy. Today's video is a little different. It has to do with cooking and no, as much as I would love to, I'm not going to be cooking in front of you guys. Those videos might come a little bit later. You know that shelf that you have in your kitchen that is full to the brim of recipe books and recipe cards and that is me. I buy a ton of recipe books from thrift stores, estate sales. I'm a hoarder of recipe books. I know. Half of the time I use them for journals, but most of the time I use them for recipes and for cooking. One of my problems is that when you have a book, you buy a cookbook and you probably only use not even half of the recipes in it, unless it's like your go-to favorite cookbook of all time. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to create my own recipe book. I didn't want to have to go through the process of binding, of actually creating a journal. I wanted it to be something fast that I could do one afternoon and be done with it so that I can have all of my recipes organized. I bought this at a thrift store. I went to my local thrift store a couple days ago and I found this little guy. I bought it because I loved the gingham. It reminds me of like a vintage farmhouse. I thought to myself, this would be the perfect place to put all of my recipes. I could transform this little binder into my recipe junk journal where I just put in a mishmash, a mishmash, random recipe books, of random recipe cards that I get, of recipes that I write down. I can just have some paper and write them down in here. This is a project that I thought would be really fun to share and something that would help you guys if you're in the same dilemma as I am. You love cooking, you have a ton of recipes, and you're getting overwhelmed with how to store them. Plus, you want to kind of store them in a creative way that's also very interactive and special. I think we have a great idea here. I'm going to be using pages from this binder that I have. It's a old Betty Crocker picture cookbook. It's falling apart, and I was going to use this one, but it's so heavy. It's really heavy. It's bookboard. And um, the rings are pretty much giving their last days. Things are just ripping out. I am, however, using the tabs that the book came with just because I think they're very, very cute. I have this one, which is just French food. And that's a little thing about me. I'm obsessed with French cuisine. With French, Asian, Mexican, those three cuisines are just, mm. and Indian. Oh my gosh. I just tried a chutney and a curry. I'm not I'm not going to start down that path because we're both going to be starving by the end of this video. <laughs> because of the beautiful spine and work that this book has, it has these animals, a little cow, a duck, and probably like an herb, gilded in gold with the country of France. And look at the spine. It's a beautiful book. So if you are interested in seeing how I transform this book into a recipe junk journal type of binder, then definitely please keep watching. All right, so here's my binder. Um, hopefully you can see it well. So it's just very white. You can paint it, you can add wallpaper. So this is my roll of wallpaper. It's kind of falling apart as you can see. It was very old. I got it from my local flea market. So I'm going to use this to probably cover the inside pages instead of this paper that I originally thought of. Or actually, you know what I might do? I might cover this with this paper and then make this into a pocket. I like that. I think that's what I might do. I think it looks a lot better with this in the background and then this as the pocket. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So if I cut it like that and then I fold it. Now obviously because it's for me, um, it doesn't have to be perfect. I kind of actually want it to have some imperfections because that is what's going to make it very, very special. So let's go ahead and cut this. So I'm going to go ahead and fold it right here, crease it right in the middle. All right, I'm just going to take my paper trimmer and I'm going to cut it. There we go. And that just fits perfectly right there. And then on this side, on this side, I'm going to do the same. So I need to fold it there. So just fold, fold and cut. I'm going to cut it a little bit bigger than initially. Um, 
just to make room for the inside pieces. I mean, that's pretty good. Here, we're gonna have to cut this. So it's about right here to the third or second flower. Do a little indent so that it like cuts right there. See that? And then we're going to fold this over. There's so much folding. We're gonna fold this over like that so that that piece goes like that and then we're gonna cut this piece right here. So I'm going to trim it right there. And we're gonna cut. So cut right there. Oh, I cut the wrong square. I just realized I cut the wrong square. I needed to cut this, not that one. Ah, do you see? These are the little like um, mistakes that you guys typically don't see on camera. But hey, sometimes we make mistakes and that's okay. Mistakes are part of the creative process, so that is fine. All I'm gonna do is I'm going to just glue it down. It's okay. It's just for me. No big deal. No one's no one's harmed. It's okay. I'll just glue it. <laughs> but I mean, hey, for just kind of winging it, I think this is pretty good. So over here, I want to make a pocket. All right, that's perfect. And then, I mean, you could do it this way, but I want to do it the other way. So now I'm going to fold this over. So we're going to put that there. And our paper, it ends right there, so it's going to be perfect. Just like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this to my sewing machine. I'm going to stitch it down, across, and then up. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to glue this to the page. Make sure that if you want to add a pocket, do not glue your background page to your binder because then you won't be able to add a pocket unless you add it with glue. But the best way to secure a pocket is definitely stitching. And then on the back here, I don't think I want to add a pocket on the back. I just want the design to be there on the back. So let me go ahead and stitch this separately and then I will be right back. So now is the fun part. Now I get to glue it down to the page. I'm going to use some clear tacky glue. I have a couple of bottles of these and I want to use them up. You want to make sure you get a lot of adhesive on the corners. Well, not too much that it like <laughs> it starts spreading out. Now you could also do fabric pockets, which is something that I'm going to do on the inside just to customize it and make it even more special. So that whole thing is pretty much all adhered with glue. Let's go ahead and glue it down. You can still maneuver it, so that's why I kind of like working with the tacky glue because you can still kind of move it around if needed. You want to fold it and you can just use the, the um, edge of your knife to do it. I find that adding glue in these little crevices enhances the crease. And I, this is applied same with um, if you're trying to make a, a journal out of like cardboard or book board, you have to crease in these little edges. And then we add the rest of the glue. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but um, I really like how it looks. And I honestly could have made the pocket a little bit longer to the side, but that's okay. <laughs> I could have made it a little bit longer, like maybe a half of an inch bigger, so then it would fit this whole page, but that's okay. I can add maybe some cute little washi tape or something here. But there we go. We have a pocket. It's really neat. I think it looks really cute. So there's that. Now let's glue this page. Same thing that we did to the other one. I might fast forward this process. All right, so now we're just going to adhere this right on, just like that. 
perfect. Absolutely perfect. Beautiful. And then we're going to add this little piece. Ah, I can't believe I cut this little piece off. Oh, Nazzy. But hey, these are the mistakes. And I like whenever I do these types of tutorials or process videos, I like to keep the mistakes in. I like to keep them in. I don't like to edit them out because that's real life. You know, real life is not perfect. Nothing is perfect. Even if you want it to be, nothing is perfect. Like this, I could have honestly covered this right here so that the white wouldn't show. And I think I might just because, um, you know, I didn't measure that piece correctly. And you know what? That's okay. Let me see if I add that. No, it's going to be, uh, I don't think it's going to look good. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and trim some of this to go in the middle. I cut this little strip of wallpaper, and I'm just going to glue it right along there. There we go. We have our little album slash binder. We have our pocket. Now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding the pages on the, um, I'm going to start adding the pages on the inside. So it's this really cute little um, image that came from a vintage book, vintage cookbook. Let me just put that in the pocket there. I have these pages here. This one's beautiful. All right, so I have some really old masking tape, and I don't want to cover all of the holes. <laughs> this is super wicked old, so it's kind of hard to um, it's kind of hard to take actual pieces off. So I'm going to add it on to here. See, it just gives it a vintage look. I've gotten a lot of questions as to where I get my vintage masking tape and I get my masking tape from um, estate sales so that goes there and this goes right there and you know what you want to match it up with the holes just like that I personally like how this looks now obviously everybody's different if you don't like how this looks you can obviously change it there we go. So now I've added my masking tape where I want to make my holes. And if you don't like this look, then you can definitely just cut it off and put, punch your own holes. But I really like the quirkiness of it. I love how it looks very vintage. It just gives it a much more vintage um, aesthetic to it. Perfect. So let's go ahead and put it in. Perfect. So we have that one. Now let me show you some other creative ways to make pockets into your Rentage Recipe Cookbook. So now I looked through my stash and I have chosen some really pretty um, floral, some vintage floral wallpapers. I also picked out some really cute um, vintage, it kind of reminds me of a farmhouse style. These have little, I think they're tomatoes on this fabric, and then on this one, they're little blueberries, so it's so cute. Um, apart from that, I have some vintage pages and scrapbook paper. I have a huge basket full of vintage um, floral fabrics. This one's really, really old. I don't know if you can see on the camera. It has some stains. This one's really pretty, too. It has, like, some lemons. No, these aren't lemons. <laughs> they're like tulips. They look like lemons. But this is just a little sample. I probably have close to 50 of these. I have so many. I've been collecting them over the years. So needless to say, I have a ton of vintage floral fabrics. And I would love to share them with you, especially if you guys want to try out this project or if you guys want to use them to create quilts or you know something like that I think it would be really fun to share them so I will be creating some vintage floral fabric textile embellishment kits for those of you that prefer this style over the linen and lace and the bohemian so I have some of this fabric I also have um, I have some of this paper some vintage papers and I also have here 
my paper pad, which I need to choose the papers that I'd like to use in here. I have my, some of my scrapbook papers chosen. I have some pattern paper, some really cool random, um, really cool pages that I had in my stash. Um, some lines, some vintage lines paper. I have this pocket here, which I basically took a file folder. I folded it in half, then I folded the edge, and I cut it. So this way I will stitch these two sides, hole punch the holes, and you will be able to use it as a cute little pocket. Or I can come in the back and stitch this, and then come over here and stitch this. So I think that's what I might do. I could stitch it on like the back and have this showing. I could do that and have this really pretty um, floral showing. Let's see how it looks in the in the book, shall we? If we just cover it up, that looks so adorable. Oh my gosh. Or if we do what I initially thought and have a cute little, I think I might do this. This will be a pocket on the back and a pocket on the front. So we've got that one taken care of. I've got this pocket already taken care of. I have this pink cardstock paper. So let's fold this over. We're gonna fold this in half, just like that. Some wallpaper. Look at this wallpaper, you guys. It's stunning. I can add it right there. Pocket on the front, and then I can have a pocket on the inside. I think that would be really cool. This one goes with this wallpaper. I think I might make another craft folder just because I love how craft craft cardstock looks on these pages. I think it looks really, really pretty. But for this one, um, I think I'm just going to cut it normally, just like a normal one. I'm not going to do a double pocket. So let me just go ahead and trim this paper. The whole idea with this is to use the papers that you already have on hand to um, enhance a project. Now, it doesn't have to be a journal. This is a way of combining the world of cooking and cookbooks and combining it into the world of journals. The best part about this project is that you can keep on adding more and more to it as, as you fill up your little cookbook. That is the best part of it. On the back, I actually... I'll make this into a pocket. That way I use up this leftover paper too. Now that I have all of my pockets um, kind of organized, I'm going to go ahead, stitch all of this up, and then I'll be right back to show you what they look like. So I quickly just wanted to say, as I was cutting this and I was going to stitch it, um, they create the pocket in the back, I noticed that the one problem that you will run into is that if you stitch your fabric pocket to a piece of paper, it is going to be extremely hard to then go in and hole punch your holes to put them in the album. So this is a little tip that I have for you. Take your piece of paper, hole punch your holes first, then take your fabric, depending on how thick it is, obviously if it's embroidery fabric, um, a simple hole puncher won't do it. I used the super you know, cheap little hole puncher and I just went in with a pencil I kind of did a little circle as to where um, where the holes lined up. I just drew a little circle in and then I take my hole punch and you literally clamp down as hard as you can. Did you hear that? <laughs> no, that is not your hole punch breaking. That is your hole punch punching fabric. And there you go, you have your holes punched. And so then you can go on and place this on your paper and then you just stitch around that. 
That way you will be able to put this into your album or else you're going to have a very hard time hole punching your holes with the layers of cardstock and then the fabric depending on how thick it is. So this is a quick um, little tip that I thought would be very beneficial if you guys try this out or if you guys would like to put any fabric pocket into an album make sure you take that into account. So let me continue sewing and then I will be right back. <laughs> All right, you guys, so I just finished stitching the pockets into my um, cookbook. I also did another pocket here. And then on the back, I did a little flip out so that I can put my mom's um, secret recipe to chilaquiles and chiles rellenos back here as like a mystery because that is... Um, that recipe is my mom's and she made it from the scratch up and it is honestly the best tasting food I have ever eaten in the world. So she gave me the recipe and that is top secret. <laughs> so my fabric flip outs work perfectly for a cooking journal as well. <laughs> Alright, so let me start organizing this. I also have all of these tabs from Betty Crocker. Um, vintage cookbook and I hole punched in where I needed them to be fixed so I fixed the hole punches so the tabs will be going in there as well And then on the front page where I decided to stitch the pocket, I you can keep recipes in here. I like to keep little ephemera pieces that I want to add throughout my um, recipe journal. I have this vintage ephemera piece. I have this really cute little baggie that says Berry Sweet. And I'm currently looking for a recipe to make homemade jam. So I can pop that in there. And then this is some scrap paper from the pocket that I showed in my recipe journal. And I want to use it to decorate or to make some tabs with it. So I'm going to save all of these things in my journal. So that is the entire project from start to finish. I really hope that you guys liked it. I personally love this. 
I have been wanting to do my own recipe journal for a long time and I didn't know if the best way was in a traveler's notebook or if I if I had to make a journal from start to finish. I honestly wanted one in a binder because of how easy it is. It is the perfect and easiest way to store your recipes, which is hole punch and put them in. Or if you're really, really lazy, make a ton of pockets and then just put your recipes in your pockets. That's all you have to do. So definitely let me know if you guys want to see more of my um, recipe cookbook. I know that you guys have been asking for um, some recipes that you've seen me use in my journal and that you've seen me mention and talk about. I'm thinking of once I have some of my staple recipes filled out, I would love to film some cooking videos because I love cooking. And cooking is a way that you can connect with someone with food, not just with art. It's a great way for you guys to see the recipes that I put into my recipe journal come to life. So definitely let me know what you guys think about this fun little project. I personally loved it. I think it was a great way to use all of my materials that I had for recipes and my vintage recipe cards and books and put them all into one place. So that is it my friends. It is starting to get late. As you can see the sun is coming through. The sun is finally starting to set and um, I just want to say thank you so much for spending your afternoon with me. Thank you for following me through my little project. <laughs> this was an idea that I had in my mind and I thought it would be fun if I filmed it and took you along with me throughout the process. You saw my little my little errors and boo-boos <laughs> and you saw how I fixed it and I made it my own so thank you so much for watching I hope that this has inspired you to create your own recipe cookbook journal and um, to utilize the papers that you already have at home you don't have to go out and buy a fancy recipe book you don't have to collect 50 different types of cookbooks and then have sticky notes sticking out of it you know from all different places just rip out the pages Pull punch them, put them in a binder, you're set to go. So if you would like to see the process as to how I create dividers with the tabs and how I decorate them, let me know in the comments below or if you like the video then I will know that you guys want me to continue on with this little series and show you how to personalize it even more. And also keep your eyes peeled out for these vintage floral fabrics that I will be putting into a textile embellishment kit very soon. That way, if you'd like to create your own recipe book and you want to put in some vintage um, fabric pieces, you can definitely do that as well. I can't wait to see this on my shelf. I will definitely add a little label on the front and a label on the spine. Um, I can't wait. I can't wait. Uh, my goal is to be 60 years old and have a ton of these on my cooking shelf. And it'll be something fun for my kids to flip through and for myself to flip through because it's just like a journal. You're customizing it and personalizing it just like a journal, but it houses our family's recipes. And until next time, my friends, I hope that your day is filled with a huge abundance of peace and love and a ton of cooking. <laughs> I will see you next time. Bye-bye. We are done. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I didn't show my shirt. No mistakes, just happy accidents by the ever so talented Bob Ross. <laughs> Best investment. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> I have to fix my hair or else someone's going to get mad at me because my hair is messy. But I'd rather, and it's still messy. <laughs> I'd rather um, spend my time creating art than doing my hair. I'm sorry for my messy hair. Okay, let's start shooting. So everything's falling. <laughs> do, 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 do. All right, you guys. So